Hey guys, welcome to my second pubcast. Now, I got a lot of great feedback on my first one, so I wanted to kind of just uh, reflect that a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, how I find my games, um, why I pick them. Uh, for starters, I go definitely go for the games um, that I think will look interesting just based on the picks, but basically what I do is I go into the client, I go to watch, and I just find a game with interesting picks. That's about it. Um, you know, I don't want to go in a game where there's, you know, three or four carries or a bunch of supports or something. I want something that's interesting. So I saw this game. I saw they had an Ursa and an Earth Shaker and a Pudge, and that's always a fun mix. Um, and I can uh, talk about that a little bit in a sec as well. But mostly want to talk about, um, again, my goal. So uh, I do want to make this... Uh, friendly for a lot of new players as well as veteran players and in my last video I didn't spend a lot of time talking about more of the Technical aspects. I didn't spell things out as well as I should have so I'm really going to try and focus on that this time So let's just uh, get jumping into this one So for the picks we do have bounty hunter We have uh, an SK a sand king and an ancient apparition as well as Leshrac and a shadow fiend on the dire side, we've got the Pudge, the Ursa, the Earthshaker, uh, the Queen of Pain, and up in base, we got the Enigma. So these are actually um, really interesting picks. Um, I haven't actually checked any of the stats, and uh, I kind of want to be surprised. That's why I just sort of pick the games that look interesting rather than just straight out picking uh, a game with, say, like a really good player like Dendi or Sing Sing, because I'm basically going to have a bias when I'm doing something like that, because Dendi is one of my favorite, you know, players in the pro scene. So if I cast a game with him in it or some other high-level player, uh, there's going to be favors, uh, favorites being played. So I try to just do a random game. I don't know any of these people, nothing. So we're just going to see how it goes, and uh, we can all be surprised, and I'll definitely try and keep up with uh, the action as best I can. And that... <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my fault. So yeah. Queen of Pain did get the uh, give up the first blood, but she was putting down wards. Um, yeah, so she's she's trying to cover her lane as best she can and the wards uh, definitely for her pudge. And there goes pudge now, and three man gank in mid. So that's what these guys are waiting for. It looks like. And again, I missed it, so I'm really sorry. I'm gonna definitely make sure I keep up with this. Um, also, someone suggested to change the icons here in the map and uh, I just hadn't done that I forgot so forgive me now smoke gank going off now what smoke does for those players that don't know is it makes you invisible to wards and neutral creeps and uh, regular creeps but as soon as uh, a hero sees you uh, you become unstealthed so now this is just perfect radiant side is is using the advantage they have and that is the stuns the stun stacking basically so SK has this ability called barrel strike where he's uh, basically you saw it you sh he shoots out <laughs> forward and where'd Shadow Fiend go? he just disconnected he shoots out forward and they pause the game so I can explain this a little bit so got SK he's got the burrow strike it moves him a certain range and everything in his path gets stunned for a short duration on top of that you've got cold feet now what cold feet does it's Ancient Apparition, a lot of his abilities are a bit, not complicated, but just very long-winded in explanation. But the simplest way to put it is, when he casts it on somebody, um, it puts a debuff on them, it, will st it does a small amount of damage every second, and it will stun them if they stay close to the point where it was originally cast. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on that a little bit. So here's another gank going on, and Earthshaker, he just saw that coming. Uh, Bounty Hunter maybe should have scouted out a little bit more forward, but here comes... Oh, they're definitely going on the Enigma. And Queen of Pain dying down there again. Uh, I'll check back down bottom. But there you go. See the little blue mark over his head? That's the cold feet. And that would have stunned him if he didn't die. So, um, And... Whoa, sorry about that. If uh, you're worried about lag, that's because my internet isn't that fantastic right now. It's going to get better, so don't worry. Oh, barely. Ursa predicting that split Earth. That was actually a really good play. Um, 
If you're not sure, Split Earth is the stun. <laughs> is the stun that, uh, laughing at the, the ward drop in the middle of a fight, is the stun that uh, Leshrac does. Now here comes Queen of Pain. Now with Split Earth, it takes a short duration to actually stun. So you can sort of predict it. His uh, Leshrac's hands will go up. Now it looks like there's a three-man gank coming. Pudge is coming down to help as well. But Ursus just like, you know what, I'm going to hang out in the jungle and farm a little bit. Queen of Pain's looking for some revenge. Pudge got the level 2 hook. Not going to be long enough to get him. But Leshrac's forced to back up. Luckily he does have those tangos, so he might be able to stay in the lane for a little while. But it looks like he's going back to base. Now let's talk a little bit about items. The item choices for some of these players. Uh, it's pretty basic. I mean, these two are looks like they're just going a full-on roaming ganking strategy right here. They know Urs is still in the jungle. They know the enemy team's warding. They probably saw wards on Queen of Pain when before she was killed. Uh, gave up first blood. Now it looks like the smoke wore off, but they're definitely going to keep... No, no. Yeah, they were spotted by the wards, so... That's one of the things you see in a lot of high-level plays. Like, I, I can guess that these guys probably are uh, high-level players with the amount of wards that's going on on bottom. Uh, no counter warding, so uh, this is obviously not going to be something... Uh, you don't see counter warding as often. You just see both sides putting wards down. Uh, Sand King's doing something interesting. He's being I guess he's distracting them. But definitely one on Pudge. That was a great play. Uh, Sand King has an ability where he can go invisible, causes a sandstorm around him. Um, and there's a short delay after he moves where he's still invisible. Now at level one, it's it's very small. It's 0.3 seconds as you can see. And that's not very much. But it is enough to be a distraction. You know, what do you do? Do you walk into the sandstorm and wait for him to walk out of it? Or and take damage? Because that's what happens while you're in the sandstorm. Now Pudge is out again for some revenge, it looks like. And here's the Shadow Fiend. He's, he is going to focus on farming. He's probably not going to leave the lane very often. And uh oh, Pudge got the Invisible Ward in his bottle, so that's going to be dangerous. Looks like Ursa's forced back into his jungle. Again, sorry, I didn't talk about items yet. No big items right now. A lot of the basic stuff. You get the, the Ironwood branches. And a lot of newer players might not know why you want to get. <laughs> yeah, Queen of Pain is one of those hard characters to gank. Surprisingly, she's already died, uh, I think, twice now. I'll check that in a bit. But uh, because of her blink, uh, blink ability, she can instantly move from one spot to another. And looks like Pudge got in there. He's getting hit up by the creeps as well as... It looks like he only got off... Yeah, just the two raises. Um, which did, which does a good amount of damage. It's at level 4, so it's very, very strong. And I'll talk about what raise does later. But we got the... Um, now this ring of basilisk, I would when it's in this uh, icon, that means it's an aura for everyone. That means everyone in the area, even including creeps. Now generally you turn this off so it's only for heroes. Now the reason you do that is because it gives armor to the creeps, which causes the creep wave to push further, um, because the higher the armor, the less damage the creeps take, and that's just that's not something you necessarily want to do, especially early on. So he should probably turn this off, but he might just have forgotten. It's not a big deal. Um, maybe they are trying to push. Maybe they want to push. I don't know. Um, against a bounty hunter, that's probably not a good idea because it just gives them plenty of room to farm. Uh, now, these guys have been roaming for a little while now, and they're just not finding anything. Um, Ursa accepts. Wow, bounty hunter got that kill. Looks like he whittled him down. Again, I'm sorry I missed that. I'm terrible at this. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. Don't worry. I I'm going to get these... You're going to see some awesome plays soon. So. Ursa is walking around the jungle. That's boring as hell. So It's interesting because Bounty Hunter should probably not... Oh, there you go. There's that gank finally coming in. Their patience paid off. And that's cold. Did you see the cold feet? So you saw that symbol over his head. And you saw the little mark on the ground. I should have pointed out a little earlier. But there's this little icy mark on the ground. And there goes uh, Pudge gank in bottom looks like, and then dies, commits suicide. But you saw the little icy mark on the ground, and the icy mark over um, Earthshaker's head. <laughs> Com commenting on their 
They're laughing at their comments there. We saw the mark over his head. After a short duration, it stunned him, uh, which uh, got the kill. See, you see the mark over his head, and he gets stunned. So the range is actually, he was just barely on the edge of the range. If he would have moved a little bit further, he might have survived. And if he can get this stun off, if, uh, oh, so you go, there's cold feet again. And he should have moved, he should have not stayed there, but, and he got, oh, right when he was going to get, right when uh, Shadow Fiend was going to get the last rays off to kill the Enigma, Pudge, uh, Pudge got the ult. This is pretty intense. But it looks like Radiance has just got their shit together way better. Oh, pardon the language. But they've just... Oh my god, such tryhards. No, it, it's... When people make those kind of comments, they're just mad. They're just mad because they're not as coordinated, you know. <laughs> they want to be. They want to win, obviously. But the Radiant side is just more coordinated. Their their team is has a lot better synergy. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to to watch this game in particular. It's because you've got the stuns. And it's the split earth right there, the stun there, and then the uh oh a hasted Ursa died because of these these stuns just stacking on each other. And that's what I'm looking at. So we got the stun from uh, Cold Feet and he's going st Cold Feet and stats. He's not doing anything else. And we got the stun from from Leshrac. And then the stun from SK. On top of the Invis and the ult. He's, uh... Sand King is one of the best, um... Just overall... Champion, or heroes in the game. Just... And that was perfect. That was perfect. I'm glad I was there to see that. So what you saw was the Burrow Strike from Sand King. And then he started channeling his ult. Right as the stun was going to wear off from his Burrow Strike, Leshrac got the Split Earth. Stunned him there. And it's just a perfect combination. And Pudge is sitting here waiting. He's trying to hook some, but it's just not going to happen. And Bounty Hunter, man, he's dangerous. You leave him alone for too long, he will get dangerous, just like you're seeing now. Um, just he, as he gets levels, he just gets so strong, especially um, with the Genada doing so much damage each hit. And it looks like um, Leshrac got Edict just to push the turret. Just to push the tower down. And uh, Pudge is just not... You see this a lot. You see a lot of people play Pudge. And sometimes they just get the bad luck where they just can't have the presence. Like I mentioned in the last video, just Pudge isn't having the presence he should. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, the enemy team should be afraid of Pudge. That's his presence. They should be afraid to move in and out. And there you go. That was perfect. Got the, the hook and the ult and just kept the rod on. But these two are going around. They're just... This is demoralizing. You see these two roaming heroes. And Pudge tried to commit suicide, but it just didn't work. The Urn of Shadows was cast on him. But there's the cold feet again. And, yeah, there's no escaping that. The damage over time is just a little too much. But Sand King has the Urn of Shadows. And what this does, every time they get a kill or he's near a kill, he gets a charge. And what he can do with these charges, he can cast it on an ally to heal them for 400 HP, or cast it on an enemy to do 150 damage. And that's what he did to Pudge. When Pudge was running away, he had the red marks around him. Another textbook kill, right there. Dyer needs to put some wards down. They, The Radiants realize, you know, these guys aren't warding. Let's get in there. Let's make them pay. That's what they're doing. And this, there's just zero coordination. There's no one here to help. Pudge came, but it, it wasn't enough. It just wasn't wasn't enough. Sorry about that. <coughs> and Dire Side, this is this is what happens a lot of times. Dire Side gets demoralized really early on. You don't see Queen of Pain. Um, she should be ganking all over the place. It, giving up first blood, I think, really demoralized her. She's just not putting her, her all. And up here, there's... there's <laughs> The dire side knows that there's three heroes up here. No one is coming except the guy who was originally in the lane. This is bad. You should not do this at all. And, and you can tell. Even a new player can understand this. Why would you send one guy here alone to face three? And they finally come. They need... Queen of Pain is obviously not farming the way she should be. Pudge is not making his presence well enough intimidating. 
what's happening instead? You've got the SK and the ancient apparition. <laughs> Ursa, man, he he's dangerous too, but he's not having the presence either. Ursa can solo pretty much any hero in the game, but they're just they're just not coalescing themselves well enough. Again, there goes Pudge, and right inside's warding now. They've got the wards. You know they're they're fearless right now. And yeah, it is actually entertaining because this is something I've wanted to see for you guys. For the newer players out there, what's happening here? What's happening? So what is causing the Radiance to be so strong right now? A couple things. Yeah, poor Pudge. It, it, there's several things happening that I can see. Queen of Pain giving up first blood. That just demoralized her. Bounty Hunter being left alone up top to farm. He got a couple early kills. And, pussy, yeah. Well, some pro players pick him, so I'm just commenting about this. Who picks who picks Bounty Hunter? Well, Bounty Hunter is a really strong hero. His ult is really, really good just in general. Uh, now they're just going to talk smack. They, you get to this level, just talking smack. So, Earthshaker, see, Dire Side has a lot of ganking heroes. They're just not ganking. Radiant Size side has two strong ganking heroes and they use them for what they're worth these two guys together strong the stun stacking is so strong and what this did was it gave three free lanes that means the bounty hunter was solo so he's getting tons of xp and the ancient operation ulti is just so good he missed but it's it's good nonetheless you've seen him do some damage uh, uh, up at top and no it's not try hard it's just they have the experience and the fearlessness. They knew Queen of Pain was bottom. She's not going to be ganking. Pudge, I think they should have had Queen of Pain mid. Pudge should have gone bottom or top, actually. I think he should have been top. He could have used this jungle to roam, his own jungle to roam. Instead, they gave the jungle up. Everyone got to just roam wherever they wanted on the Radiant side. They got the, the Queen of Pain got wards early, but that was it. Someone else should have been getting wards. So what happened here is I think Enigma should have been in the jungle. He has a jungling build. And Ursa should have been jungling with him. Um, and ganking. They should have just been jungling together and ganking instead of these two guys. Now, these guys are setting up something pretty diabolical, <laughs> honestly. They're going to come down they're they're using ancient apparition to bait right now this is pretty interesting now these two guys they both have an item called blink dagger and what that does is allows them to travel a short distance instantly and all three of them are up there now you're seeing what happened here is they just kept falling for the same tricks they thought oh you know these two guys the the this sk and the aa <laughs> pushing oh goodness so it looks like the dire side. I'm sorry, this game is so boring now, but this is what happens sometimes. So I'm going to try and talk my best about how this happened, how to prevent something like this, at least in my opinion. Um, go in a little more detail. So again, they gave up the ground. They, they saw that the Ancient Aberration and the SK were ganking, and instead of trying to stop it, they just went about their business in their own lanes. They acted like this was a single player game. Whereas the Radiant side was the it wasn't even the side, it was just the AA and the SK gave three lanes free. So the Leshrek had bottom lane but solo, the, the the bounty hunter had top lane solo. And this just and this the Sat Shadow Fiend who is a dangerous, you don't wanna just leave him alone. So that's that's what they took advantage of. This could have easily been countered by a couple of just some people going into the jungle and trying to counter jungle them or counter gank them sorry you get a queen of pain you get earth shaker and you get enigma and you just and i'm lagging so hard sorry about that marinette's terrible today <laughs> and sk's brave brave oh that was brilliant that timing was perfect timed it just so that right after right before the stun ended he would blink out that was perfect. And he got... <laughs> you know, just just sit back and watch. This is... Obviously, this isn't the most fun 
you can see it's not a close game by any means. I'll probably make another video and talk about it a little more. Now Ursa, he went AFK. <sighs> the problem with Ursa is he didn't gank. He didn't... He couldn't, actually. He needed someone with him. Oh, did SK and be ahead? Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. So, I'm just going to ignore that for now. They're just going to be trash talking and such. So, this team has a great lineup. They're just not using them the way they should. Enigma, Ursa, those two could have been going around demolishing people. But instead, Ursa was by himself. SK, or I mean, sorry, Earthshaker, he can handle his lane alone. He, you know, leave him alone for a little while. The problem is, none of these guys are solo laners. Except for Queen of Pain, and she should have been mid. She should have been mid. Pudge, he's a good strong mid, but the enemy team had strong control of the map, strong control of the wards, and here's an invisible vis rune. Ken Lashrak, nope. Pudge was going back bottom to farm. <laughs> Lashrak totally miscalculated, but that's okay. They kill him anyway. Just too many blinks, too many, you know. And this this blinking, everyone getting a blink. Oh, he's got four staff. That's a nice item, too. Yeah, he's saying it, they, they can leave. After five minutes, people can leave if there's a lever on one tide. And that was the uh, Ursa. Now, this is an unfortunate game. Obviously, you don't want to be in the situation Dyer was on. So, at this point, items don't even matter. I was going to try and make this video about items. Expecting another long, long game, but... No, the only big items are the blink daggers, and it's showing... <laughs> what is this guy doing? He's getting a Dagon, and Dagon is just a straight-up DPS item. It just one-shot, big blast, 400 damage, and you can actually level it up. But most people just keep it at one level. You don't need it past level one, unless you're farming so well, which these guys actually are, so they might... Maybe he'll troll a bit with that. But again, they could have had way better map control if the Queen of Pain would have gone mid instead of bottom. She's not a strong laner. When it, she needs the short lane for the ganking. Sure, she can blink out. And she, sh she should have been able to survive a way better than she did. She gave up two kills early on. And that just shouldn't have happened, honestly. Uh, Queen of Pain also would have been a good counter against Shadowfiend because Shadowfiend has such low HP early on and Queen of Pain can whittle him down really easily with his with his uh with Queen of Pain's I'm sorry with Queen of Pain's blink you can avoid the raises a lot more easily as well Pudge he's got to get in there close and that's 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 what raise that's what Shadowfiend wants he wants you in close so he can get the raises all three off if he can hit with all three it's almost a guaranteed kill against most heroes. And the way the way Rays works, it's just three ranges. <laughs> I'll let you guys just sort of be entertained a little bit here. Even if it if it's not really entertainment, honestly. But the Rays way Rays works, the reason he's such a strong mid laner, rather than going in a, uh, another lane uh, with Shadow Fiend, is because this it's got the long range, which is seven hundred range, then the four fifty, and then the two hundred. And it and it, when you activate the ability, it'll cast directly in front of where you're facing. And SK is just trolling them there, but that was actually a really good example of a strong SK combo. <laughs> Shadowfiend is just devastating with that. And oh, the reason is that Desolator it l drops their armor by six. It actually does it on the f the b b before the first hit. Activates, I believe. It, sh it, it That's how it was in Dota 1. I'm pretty sure that's still how it is. So, their armor is reduced by 6. That gives them even more damage, obviously. So, it makes him hit so hard. On top of that, with each charge of his. What's it called? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. The, the Necromastery. That's what it's called. it's called. I think it's called something else in Dota 1. Sorry. But each charge gives him a set amount of damage. Now, he can have a maximum. Of 36 souls, and each soul gives him two bonus damage. And that's that's huge. As you can see, he's got over 200 damage right now. 
with each auto attack. That's huge, especially against an underfarmed. Just these poor guys, they're just suffering right now. Radiance is just stringing them along as, as long as possible. Now, I'm pretty sure this Queen of Pain is just n either not in it, just completely not paying attention, or it's just not a very good Queen of Pain. I'm not a very good Queen of Pain, so I, I'm not going to say too much against that, but she could have easily blinked out. Maybe just thought it was futile and just didn't care, but trying to end the game a little earlier by feeding some kills. And even, <laughs> even the Bounty Hunter has... The blink dagger. That's pretty interesting, actually. But that's just because they're so fed right now. They don't even care. Why dagger? Who cares? Just because. It's, the game's over. Who cares? Just get whatever you want. And that's the end, guys. I know this was a short game. Um, I'm going to post it anyway. So. And hopefully I can give you guys some advice as to avoid something like this. So what went right on the Radiant side? Well, for starters, obviously, like I pointed out multiple times, this, the Sand King and the Ancient Apparition, just ganking. That's their advantage. Ancient Apparition is, as you can see, his t he didn't get Icy Vortex, he didn't get Chilling Touch. Actually works out really well in this case, because he doesn't need them. With Sand King falling around, he doesn't need the extra slow, because he's got the extra stun instead from Sand King. Um, can I click on people still? Yes, I can. Excellent. Now, this gave Leshrac free farm at bottom, and he, honestly, he should not have been losing to this Queen of Pain. Leshrac, they both start out with low HP, but Queen of Pain, with her blink, it gives her so much mobility, it allows her to, to put herself out of position to bait the enemy. And what that means is putting herself in a vulnerable position where Leshrac might actually be able to get a stun off or something. It gives him the confidence to go, hey, you know, I might be able to hurt the Queen of Pain, I might be able to do some damage. And it's, and then she can instantly blink to a new position and put herself in a much more advantageous place where she can get a full combo off or get some auto attacks in and maybe juke around the jungle a little bit. And she just... I didn't watch her too much, but she died twice early on. That's It's just not heard of from a Queen of Pain. It just doesn't happen. Auto disconnect in 20 seconds. Alright, well, I'll make this short then. So, how did how should the Dire side have avoided? Well, like I said, the Queen of Pain should have gone to mid. It would have given her better rune control because she can blink, so it gives her the mobility to actually get to the runes really, really quickly. On top of that, the Pudge should have been supporting another lane. With that that strong of a combo going around ganking, that's what they should have been doing. Pudge should have been supporting another lane because he can actually shut down a gank because he can force the enemy out of position by pulling them. And positioning is really, really important. So I think in my next video, I'm going to maybe focus on that a little bit as well, as well as item choices. I was going to go over item choices here, but oh, obviously that's out the window. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for some people. It's short, sweet. But uh, and kind of bitter, honestly. But yeah, um, thanks for watching.